Hey, what's up you guys, welcome back. So I know the title of this video might trigger some of you uh, and I can already sense the flood of angry comments down below saying how dare I question the Fed and how I'm unqualified to make such comments. Uh, and you know what, that's fine. Uh, that's a fair argument, but let me just say that number one, I'm not the only person who has this opinion, okay? So a lot of people who have much higher credentials than me, who are actual uh, economists, uh, agree with me and share this opinion. Uh, and we'll talk about some specific examples later. Uh, and number two, uh, you don't have to agree with me, okay? So uh, I could be wrong. The fact is that nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows where the market is gonna go and nobody knows uh, where like the economic conditions are gonna turn out to be uh, you know six months or a year from now right so uh, I figure that this bear market has turned us all into armchair macroeconomists uh, so we're all just kind of sitting here and free associating about what's gonna happen and making predictions so let me make mine okay so if you have a different opinion uh, leave it down in the comments or even if you agree with me leave it down in the comments I'd love to hear what you think uh, so uh, let me rewind a bit though uh, first of all what am I even talking about right so uh, I'm talking about uh, the recent Fed decision to raise interest rates uh, so if you paid attention to any business news recently, you'll know that the Fed decided to raise the federal funds rate by 75 basis points last week, uh, bringing it to a total of 3.25%. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what that means, uh, basically the federal funds rate is the interest rate at which the central bank uh, lend money to uh, other banks, right? So uh, it determines the rate at which banks can borrow the money uh, from the central bank. Uh, so the higher the interest rate is, uh, the more expensive it is for banks to borrow money, which means less liquidity, less investments, it slows down the economy as a whole. Uh, so the Fed is trying to force um, the economy to slow down, basically, uh, because inflation is at a 40-year high. Uh, now, the decision to raise by 75 basis points, one basis point is 0.01%, so 75 basis points is 0.75%. Uh, so the decision to raise... Uh, 75 basis points in of itself, in my opinion, is not problematic. Uh, in fact, the market has been expecting it uh, for a long time. And uh, we were actually fearful that the Fed was going to do 100 basis points, which did not happen, uh, thankfully. But uh, even though I think that that decision itself doesn't really matter that much, uh, you'd think that the stock market would you know, stay flat and uh, like, or because like everything's priced in, it might even go up, right? Um, the reason why the stock market reacted negatively, in my opinion, uh, is because uh, of another thing called the SEP, uh, which is the summary of economic projection. Basically, it's this like chart thing with, um, you know, where the Fed thinks the numbers are going to go over the course of the next year, two years uh, or beyond. So it's the document that outlines all of that. Uh, meaning that uh, if they're going to raise interest rates now, uh, they obviously can't just raise interest rates forever uh, because at some point it's going to crash the economy so hard it's going to plant us into like another, like we're going to face plant into another depression, right? Like the 1930s. So uh, they got to stop at some point. Uh, and in the SEP, uh, they revealed that they expect the federal funds rate to remain terminal, like to, to remain constant. They should stop raising rates. That's what terminal means. Uh, they would stop raising rates and uh, hold it constant at 4.6%, uh, which is about 125 or 150 basis points away from right now. Uh, so that means that they'll do another 75 basis points probably in November uh, and fit in another 50 or 75 sometime between December and maybe uh, even early uh, 2023. Uh, so this is the decision that is controversial and this is kind of what I disagree with uh, because many people were expecting the Fed to just pause or pivot, right? So pausing means stopping the interest rate hikes uh, and some people define that to be a pivot as well, although uh, I would say a pivot means that they're actually going to cut interest rates, but whatever, right? So just semantics. Uh, but the Fed is refusing to even talk about any of that, right? Pausing or pivoting. Uh, so you're thinking, like, why do I care, right? Like, why do I care what, like, a bunch of old men and, like, uh, and women for for that? Uh, what do I care about a bunch of old people sitting in a room making decisions about, like, some numbers, right? Uh, well, this actually affects all of us. Um, and 
I think that the Fed should really pause the interest rate hikes and just hold at 3.25 or maybe like they can hike maybe 25 basis points more if they really wanted to and hold it at 3.5. Uh, but, you know, I think they should signal that they should either pause or uh, or even like give us a timeline on when they should pivot. Uh, and uh, this is controversial because I know inflation is at a 40 year high. So you're thinking like, Andy, you're crazy. Uh, like inflation is going to go out of control and we're all going to like our money is going to degrade to nothing if they don't uh, keep on raising interest rates. Um, so I'm not sure if you've ever seen this show called Futurama. Uh, if you have, uh, there's this one episode where Fry's driving and uh, he's too cold. So he turns up the heat, uh, but then he's too hot. So instead of turning down the heat, he turns on the AC. Uh, but then that still leaves, uh, but then he's still leaving the heat on, right? So then now it gets too cold again, so he turns the heat up even higher. Uh, so this is like what the Fed is doing, okay? So uh, the Fed can only control the demand side by raising and lowering interest rates. Uh, so then trying to tackle inflation, uh, which in my opinion is a supply problem, uh, it's like turning on AC uh, when it gets too hot and instead of turning the heat off, right? So it's okay to turn the AC on if like nothing else is on, but then like the problem is not that you need to turn the AC on, the problem is that you need to turn the heat off, right? Uh, so the point is that they're not tackling the real problem, uh, the underlying causes of inflation by like raising and lowering interest rates because that's caused by the supply chain issues uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, now, I understand that that's out of their control, but what I'm saying is that they should at least recognize that fact. Uh, and if they did, they would know that we're slowly making our way through these supply chain problems and they're actually getting better. Uh, and uh, by raising interest rates a little bit already, they're already tapering demand. Uh, so demand is on the downswing. Uh, and then also the supply chain is getting better, which means that inflation is already coming down naturally. Uh, but they don't need to like rug pull us with like these continued really fast paced, really big interest rate hikes. Uh, so uh, to back up what I'm saying, uh, we're seeing this deflation or disinflation, uh, if you want to call it that, um, we're seeing this disinflation already happen, right? So if you look at the commodity prices for corn, wheat, lumber, industrial metals like copper, nickel, whatever, uh, most importantly, oil. Uh, so they're all coming down, right? Commodity prices are all coming down and coming down is maybe even an understatement. Some of them are literally just crashing. It's going to take some time for those disinflationary effects to work through the system, right? So uh, let's say if you're like making like pipes that need copper or if you're making like, you know, I don't know, wires that need copper, uh, you know, you, you might not be able to raise and lower your prices to the consumer that quickly because uh, you don't want to adjust your prices like day to day right but if copper prices continue to go down for a really long time uh, then eventually uh, you know you you feel pressure to lower your prices right because you want to get more people to buy your products uh, and if you can make the same margin uh, while still lowering your price then you're probably going to do it right so uh, but it's going to take time for that kind of price effect to filter into the end products uh, when it's the raw materials that are declining in price first uh, so it's going to take time, but in the meantime, uh, the Fed is still hiking interest rates, which they're still killing demand while demand is already going down. So that's the problem. Uh, this means that the Fed is at risk of making a mistake on top of a mistake. Uh, so I think we can all agree that the first mistake was already made, which is raising interest rates too late. So the Fed should have been raising interest rates back in 2021, uh, but they did not. Uh, why? Because they were looking at the data and going, hey, like inflation is fine. We can keep rates at zero and keep printing money. Uh, when in reality, the seeds of inflation have already been planted and the economy is already overheating, but they haven't seen it in the data yet uh, because the data is lagging uh, and it just hasn't filtered through. So they're like, oh, everything is fine. Inflation is transitory. And then uh, look what happened, right? Uh, now they're actually, uh, in my opinion, uh, about to make the same mistake uh, exact same mistake on the opposite end. Uh, so 
they're looking at the data and going inflation's out of control inflation's too stubborn we need to absolutely crush the economy uh, so that we can press inflation down uh, well in reality disinflation is already taking place but by the time they realize that uh, by the time the lagging data comes through uh, we're already going to be in a deep depression or deep recession maybe even a depression um, so if you're not convinced uh, just look at uh, the market, any market that was previously red hot, right? So if you wanted to buy a GPU six months ago, you can't, right? Even for MSRP, they won't sell you one because they just don't have stock. Uh, now try looking for a GPU. Uh, if you were to build your own computer and you wanted to buy a new GPU, you can probably even find one on sale, right? So many options below MSRP now. Uh, if you wanted to buy a used car now, uh, it's still pretty expensive compared to pre-pandemic. Um, so it's still kind of inflated, but it's definitely a lot better than six months ago. Uh, so we can have a debate about whether or not we're already in a recession. I'm of the opinion that we're already in a recession because we did get uh, two quarters on negative GDP growth. Uh, but for the sake of argument, let's just say we're not in a recession just yet. Uh, so I have a hard time seeing that how we can avoid uh, a recession if we're not already in one, uh, because the Fed is going to tighten economic conditions into a recession. Uh, and this is a big mistake, uh, in my opinion. And I think that if they continue their current pathway to 4.6% uh, terminal Fed funds rates, uh, they're going to wreck a lot of things. Uh, and people are going to criticize them for decades to come for just acting on lagging data and you know plunging us into a deep recession. Uh, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. So Jeremy Siegel, uh, who is a professor from the economics school, uh, the Warren School of Business, um, he's... Uh, basically making the same argument or he made the same argument on CNBC and he got super passionate about it too. So uh, I highly recommend you watch that interview with Jeremy Siegel on CNBC, which I'll leave a link down below in the description. Uh, and yeah, I have to say I have to agree with Professor Siegel. Uh, and uh, even Elon Musk has chimed in and says that he agrees with Siegel because uh, I assume he watched the same clip uh, he tweeted about it. So uh, I know people are going to say, well, Elon's not an economist, right? So what does he know? Uh, well, listen, well, for someone who's heavily involved in the commodities industry, uh, which Elon is because he's building electric cars and what do batteries need? A lot, a lot of just base metals, right? Like nickel, iron, uh, I think they need copper too, or lithium for sure, uh, right? So I think uh, Elon knows uh, way more uh, than like a lot of professional economists because he's actually on the ground experiencing uh, all of this in real life and looking at the data uh, as it's coming through. Uh, and he's not just like sitting in an office reading a textbook uh, about like economics like a lot of these professionals, right? So uh, personally, I'm still positioned for an end of the year rally uh, because I think that, you know, at some point the Fed hopefully wakes up and be like, hey, maybe we're too aggressive. Maybe we'll signal a pause or pivot sometime in 2023. Uh, and just that signal alone, I think, is enough to send the stock market rallying. Uh, but, you know, that's that's my hypothesis. Again, there's a very good chance I could be wrong. So I don't know. Like, it's just make your own decisions, your own research, and don't just blindly follow what I do or what any YouTuber uh, does, right? So... Um, but I'm still positioned for an end of the year rally. Uh, so uh, worst case, though, uh, if Fed does decide to stay on the current path of rate hikes, uh, I think the majority of the bad news is behind us uh, even. So like, you know, they're at 4.6 now. Uh, is there a chance that they could come out with like another SEP? Uh, three months from now, be like, hey, the federal, the terminal federal funds rate is projected to be at 6% now. Uh, like, of course, that could happen, right? But I don't think it's likely. If that did happen, um, the stock market will probably go down like at least another 10 or 15%, probably 20%, right? But hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, hopefully the Fed sees the light and they don't continue on the current path. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, I, I'm mostly in shares anyways. Uh, so if things go south, I can just hold my shares. This is why I didn't want to go too deep uh, into options. Uh, but yeah, like the majority of my holdings are just in shares. So I'll just keep on holding and keep on accumulating shares uh, if the stock market continues to go downwards. But 
Uh, yeah, anyways, that's it for my video for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and hopefully that gave you some uh, new insights. Uh, so if you like this video, please give a like uh, and be sure to subscribe if you like the content. Uh, and also be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links down below in the description for those as always. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.